see in swap what happens there are two partners a and b a has borrowed money from kotak bank b has borrowed money from hd bank b is paying floating rate interest a is paying fixed rate okay so your voice is breaking yeah now can you hear my voice yes sir Uh, so A is making A has borrowed money from Kotak Bank. B has borrowed money from HDFC Bank. A is paying interest to Kotak Mahindra, and B is paying floating interest to HDFC. Okay. So what happens is they agree A and B. They agree to swap payments or exchange payments. How? They first fix a notional principal amount. Let's say hundred thousand dollars. B is making a payment based upon market reference rate. Previously, we used to we used to take LIBOR. Now LIBOR is not in uh, like uh, uh, like like it's not is not something which is right now applicable. Now market reference rate is applicable. Okay. Uh, so let's say floating rate. Floating rate. We will just use the term. Floating rate is nothing but. Uh, like five uh, percent is the reference rate, and based on, and above that, the rate is not going to be fixed. It is going to fluctuate. That means it can become seven percent, six percent, nine percent. Are you understanding, Bhargav? Yes. Yes. But here it is ten percent fixed. Finished. What is happening? B is worried that if the interest rate goes up, B is going to pay more uh, interest. payments a is worried that if the interest rate goes down a is going to make more interest payments so what they do is they enter into swap agreement uh, based upon which b agrees to make a's payments and a agrees to make b's payments okay and in this case one party is going to lose one party is going to gain one uh, one party's loss is other party's gain are you understanding yes sir so like uh, say an agreement whereby b has agreed to make the payment of 10% interest rate a 10% interest rate uh, to a's bank b has agreed to make the payments a ton a 10% interest rate to a's bank and a has agreed to make payments uh, of floating rate payments and today what they have agreed is at 5% okay at, at like let's say uh like uh, 10% let this keep us 10% now the rate has gone to 12% who is making more payments here a so who's gain b who's loss a understood yes by c words uh, if the rate goes down b is loss that's what they can agree to uh, like divide this gain also mutually if the gain is of 2000 dollars 1000 goes to a and 1000 and goes to b it depends see it depends if they make the agreement they can do that or else one party is gain is other party is loss shall we move forward hello hello yes sir arga visit okay did you understand yes, yeah i'm going for we discussed about exchange traded derivatives futures options okay there are clearing houses uh, like central this is the you know uh, whenever you want to trade securities will be put in that in your dmat account the clear house will be okay how opposite position to each side of trade that is a is the buyer b is the seller and there is a central clearing house so a has to buy the security okay and b has to sell the security so central clearing house essentially takes opposite position to uh, each side of trade that means a is not going to trade directly with b a is going to trade with central clearing house okay and b is also going to trade with central clearing 
in house. So I'm going to ensure that and payment moves from here to here. Are you understanding? Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. So central clearing house essentially takes the opposite position to each side of trade called novation, guaranteeing the payments promised under the contract. Okay. That means whatever the payments are going to happen, these people are going to ensure that it is going to happen. So the central clearing house requires deposits from both participants. Okay, see uh, this functionality which I said that the money that the money has to move from A to B and the stock has to move from B to A. That is not going to be done by central clearing house. It is going to be done by exchange. Okay, uh, this is a very big you know structure. I cannot like completely explain you that today. It's a very big structure, but you should understand that. Let's say there is no this 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 exchange which is doing every functionality. Who is doing every functionality? So, uh, like like uh, the exchange. See, there can be there are clearing banks also in this. Both the parties will have their own clearing banks. So I am removing all this structure, Bharga. I am making this things very simple. How I am making is both the parties have demat accounts. Both the parties. Are going to trade through exchange. They are going to deposit their money with the exchange as margins. Okay. Now, who is going to facilitate the trade between A and B? The central counterparty, which is the exchange, and it is going to ensure that the stock, uh, what A wants to buy from B, uh, it reaches to A from B, and whatever the money which has to go from A to B, it reaches to uh, B from A. And who is going to ensure that all the okay. exchange? And exchange, uh, there are multiple organizations involved in this also. But let me keep things very clear. This is what is happening. The central counterparty is exchange. It is minimizing the counterparty creditors by by making them to deposit equal payments in their accounts. Okay, for that particular trade. What is this standardization of contract? There will be a lot size. Okay, so standardization of contract. See, things are very standard in this. Uh, a lot size would be there. A time duration would be there. Okay, generally three months, six months. So standardization of contract allows exchange traded derivatives to be more liquid and more transparent to market participants compared to customized derivatives. See, customized derivatives are a part uh, are typical of which contracts? Forward, which one Bhargav customized derivatives? Which one I said? Forward. Sorry, sir. Yeah, but like speak to each other, and they can fix uh, any lot, any quantity. Okay, and they can do the trading. Now, standardization. See, with standardization, what happens? The clearing and settlement of trade also happens very smoothly. Right now we have discussed about the clearing and settlement process only. In clearing and settlement process, there are a lot of parties involved. Clearing banks, clearing houses. OK. All these are involved. Just a second. So this process is not given in details in your book, but you know clearing and settlement process do happens. We say T1 days, T2 days, right? Whenever a trade happens between two parties, if if at all you want to sell all your stock, then you want money. So that money will never be credited immediately. Uh, right now T1, T2 days uh, mechanism is going on. That means your trade will be settled and in two days the money will be created to your account. Are you understanding? And there will be a, there will be you know investor, and there will be this in this side investor. There will be a, the exchange is the central counterparty between them. There will be a clearing house. There will be a clearing bank, clearing house, clearing bank, 
and these are all the parties which are involved in the clearing and settlement process. So uh, the uh, like what happens if this investor wants to buy the stock? So this investor has to put that in the DMAT account, OK? And then uh, like has to deposit the margin amount. This uh, this guy also has to deposit the money in the margin account, OK? And then who is going to ensure that the money is going to reach from one party to another party, the clearing bank? From uh, from here, the money goes to exchange from uh, from exchange. It goes to the clearing bank of uh, the seller and from here the stock goes to clearing house and from clearing house to exchange and exchange to clearing house of this particular investor. So this happens. This particular process happens and all these parties are involved in this clearing and settlement process. But the point here is they have to ensure that. All the things are settled OK in the timeline and no party is defaulting okay that increases the trust is it so what are dealer otc market for derivatives here you are not going to trade through exchange but you are going to trade through some brokers okay or dealers whereby you are going to buy the stocks and sell so forwards most swaps and some options are custom instruments created and traded by dealers in the market with no central location. Here you will not be finding any central counterparty. The risk is between the two uh, people who are involved in the trade, the buyer and the seller. The risk they have to bear the risk of default. Unlike uh, in exchange traded where the things when central counterparty was the uh, party to both the parties. OK, uh, like here the buyer is not directly uh, trading with seller and seller is not trading with buyer in case of exchange traded instruments. There is a central counterparty between them. So buyer is trading with this and seller is trading with this. The, but the central counterparty is ensuring that things move from here to here and things move from here to here. But in case of OTC markets, you can buy the stocks from the bank, from brokers, from some dealers. OK, and then you can sell it in the same market. Here there is no Clearing house, nothing like that. No structure like what we discussed right now. OK. And it is less transparent and uh, like you know, more risky. Now. After the uh, see what happened, you know, people learn from disasters. In 2008, there was a financial crisis. And the regulators worldwide instituted a central clearing mandate requiring that for many swap trades, a central counterparty uh, takes on the counterparty credit risk of both sides of trades, similar to the role of central clearing house. An example, as an example, because you know this disaster was because of bank. Uh, Lehman Brothers got collapsed in 2008. So as an example, multiple dealers record their swap trades on swap execution facility. So you know they tried to introduce a central counterparty for all the swap trades so that the parties do not default. Now following offers a summary of primary differences between exchange trade and OTC derivatives. Exchange trade are you know traded at centralized location and exchange traded by the exchange members, market makers. And uh, based on uh, there is a lot of lot size here, not customized. And like more regulated rules and regulations are strictly to be followed. There are clearing houses to minimize the counterparty creators because clearing house is going to ensure that money is reaching from one party to another party. And deposits are uh, important to enter into these kind of trades uh, in, in, in initially more liquid because you know more why more liquid why more this is more liquid exchange traded uh, derivatives why bargain because there's no risk of default and more transparent as all transactions are known to exchange and to regulators otc custom instruments less liquid because more risky less transparent more counterparty risk default risk is there more difficult to clearing clear and settle because clearing and settlement process is not at all there here Higher trading cost and not subject to requirements for deposit of collateral. Because you know, if you want to trade in futures, see Bhargav, what happens? If at all you want to trade in futures, you know, 100 
tons is the minimum lot size for zinc as a commodity. What will you do? You don't have money, correct? So in this case, you only have to keep the 10% of this in the account as margin. 90% you will be getting loan, correct? Yes. And on what basis are they going to give this loan, Bargo? The asset or what? That asset what you're going to buy. So 90% of that is going to be taken as collateral. Are you understanding? Yes, yes. Since it's a cash settlement, there is no delivery happening here. In this case, nothing like that. Okay. So these, uh, this is the end of chapter Bhargav. We will go into the next chapter in very detail and deeply and finish this particular chapter also in the next reading. That is soon. Or are we going to take the class? Hello. Yes, sir. Are we going to take the class tomorrow? Uh, yes, sir, I can take the class. My next exam is on 29th. So okay, I have five days holidays. Uh, so probably okay, so let's do one thing. Let's do one thing. Let's let's solve this question. OK, we have all done options, right? Yeah, let's solve this question. Last question. Yeah, yes. do this. I'm waiting. Sir, exercise prize is what I forgot, sir. Shall I do this question? Uh, yes, sir. Sir, and uh, see. Explain again what the long and short option is again. Long is with respect to call. Short is with respect to see. Okay. Long is you want to buy in the future, okay, at some fixed price. That is okay. taking a long position. You want to wait and you want to uh, gain from the increase in the prices. Short is you want to sell it, okay. Yes. Long longs motive is to buy and hold. Shorts motive is to sell and then buy back at lower price. Are you understanding? Yes, sir. These guys want to sell at higher price and buy back at lower price. <coughs> These guys want to buy at lower price and enjoy the profits if the prices go up. So suppose that a, that both a call option and a put option have been written on a stock with an excise price of 40. So calls. So it's a call of 40 and it's a put of 40. Stock price is 40 and the call and put premiums are 3 and 0 0.75. So here the premium is 3, 0 0.75. So what is going to happen? It's a current stock price is 42. Calculate the profit to long and short position for both put and call with an expiration date stock price of 35 and with the price at expiration of 43. So let's say if the price goes to 35 Bharadha. So uh, for call option, are you going to exercise? No, it's going to be worthless, right? So $3 is the minimum loss for you, the premium amount, correct or wrong? Yes, sir. See. Long call, what is the amount? $3, correct? Hello. Yes, sir. So if you are long on this call, Bharga, who is short on this call? The option yes. seller. Yes. Who is who is long? You, the buyer. Who is short? The option seller right. who has sold you. Yeah. So the buyer is take has taken a long position. The seller is you know selling you immediately. So they it they have taken the short position. So minimum loss for you is the premium and minimum gain for the short is the premium what he has received. OK, so for short. This is the gain for long. 
loss. Okay, you can see. Here. So here yeah, long Whatever call means it wait for the future to buy. Yeah, yeah, buyer. He has bought a call option and want to wait. Of course, buyers would do that, right? Yes. See, long taking a long position means you have purchased an option and you want to wait. Of course, in case of call option, you want to wait the price to be higher and you want to make gains out of it in case of long position. So you purchase long is buying short is selling long position. If you are taking that means you are buying a call option short position. If you are taking that means you are selling a call option. Long position, if you are taking in the case of put option, you are buying a put option. Short position in case of put option is nothing but you are selling a put option. Understood? Okay. Yeah. Did you understand this long and short piece? Yes, sir. And now the put. So uh, the price is how much? 35. And uh, what is the strike price? 40. So 40 is the strike price. And the price right now is 35. So for long put, the buy the buyer of the option, it is gain, right? Five dollars, and the premium is 0 0.75. That means this is the value of the put option minus the gain 4.25. Correct? Yes, sir. For long put, this is the loss for short put, correct or wrong? Yes. Of course, for long put, if it is the gain for short put, that much he, if he has exercised the option, this is a loss. He has got the premium amount and lost five dollars. So if net four point two five loss, correct? Yes. Are you following? Yes, sir. Yeah. If it is forty three, so for long call, he has taken thirty five, right? So he is getting a profit of eight dollars minus the premium three dollars, five dollars, five dollars gain for him, loss for short call. Is it just a second? What's the price given? Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. What am I doing? Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Exercise price is 40, right? My God, Bhargav, you should have told me. I'm just in uh, doing in some other mode. Okay. What is the exercise price, Bhargav? Hello. Sir, exercise price is the uh, strike price. Yeah, that is 40 here, right? Yes. The price, the price of the stock has gone to 43. So three dollar is the gain for the uh, long call, and he is making the premium payment of how much? Three dollars. So zero left over for him. It's a out of the uh, at the money option. Sorry, out of it's like at the money. Yeah. And. For option seller, there is a gain of three dollars. The entire premium he has received, correct? Yes. Sir. But the problem is, whatever the uh, like uh, from forty to forty three, it has reached. So there was a gain of three dollars, but again premium payment three dollars zero. And for a seller, for short call. Three dollars he received for premium, but the stock price has gone up, right? For him, it's a loss of three dollars again. Yes, so zero. Did you understand? Yes. Any doubts? No, sir. Last one. So if it has gone to forty, uh, strike price is forty. Okay. And uh, at expiration 43. So if the price has gone up for long put, it's a loss, right? Three dollars. Uh, Three dollars. But is is he going to access the option? No, sir. No. So the premium is the loss. Okay. And the premium is the gain for the short put. Finished? Yes, sir. Yeah, he's not going to access the option. He's going to let it lapse. Fine. Finished. Okay. We'll continue the rest things tomorrow. Yes. Okay, Bhargav. I think less tomorrow okay. is the last last what is. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you yeah. Okay. Bye. Bye.